Hello everyone, this is Jotto and welcome to the Hearthstone Weekly Show. Now for this week I'm doing something that I've been thinking about doing for a while and I decided to do it this week because Noxious did something similar. Not quite the same, but similar. So if anyone doesn't know, what he did was he looked over certain cards and certain changes that can make underplayed cards playable. Now in that video he did mention Novice Engineer, which used to be a 1-2, was nerfed to a 1-1, one, one, and then he suggested putting back to a 1-2. Now as far as I know that was the only card in there that had been nerfed that he put back, but it kind of reminded me of what I wanted to do here, which is my top 5 unnerfable cards. So basically, a lot of cards have been nerfed. Some of them for very good reasons. I say some of them because, uh, as I'm going to go over in the honorable mentions list, that's all the stuff that could be unnerfed, but the nerf wasn't even warranted in the first place, so yeah. But uh, there's reasoning behind these nerfs, and the fact that they were overpowered in the past is not necessarily true now, to the point when they could be unnerfed and actually just become playable, not even overpowered. So, it's quite an interesting list, but anyway, for honorable mentions... There's obviously Buzzard, which yes, it needed to be nerfed, however, they should have just redesigned the ability, not killed it. Uh, then there's silly things like Captain's Parrot being nerfed to a 1-1 one -one from a 1-2 for no reason. There's, there's a couple of these, there's, there's a couple of random stuff. I actually did a weekly show on it a while back, just talking about really weird nerfs when uh, the Leroy and Buzzard nerfs came out. But there's a lot of honorable mentions. And there is one that almost made the list, but didn't quite, which is Backstab. Now, Backstab had one of the strangest changes they've ever made to a card. And it didn't really nerf it that much. It nerfed it a tiny amount, but the nerf is so small that it doesn't even come up every game. Which is, uh, it used to be able to hit damaged minions. Now, you could say that's too powerful, but... In actual play, that doesn't come up that much. It does sometimes, so it doesn't come up that much. So that did almost make it on the list. Not to mention Rogue isn't exactly overpowered right now. So you could definitely get away with it. But anyway, on to the actual list. We're going in order of... Number 5 is basically what they could unnerf. And number 1 is what I feel they should unnerf. Uh, so we're starting with Shattered Sun Cleric. Now, Shattered Sun Cleric used to be a 3-3. It was really insane back in that metagame, uh, being basically a 4-4 four, four for 3. Part of it having haste is kind of insane. Apart from the fact that we now have Spider Tank, Dark Cultist, Tinkertown Technician. We just have insane 3-drops, to the point when Shattered Sun Cleric isn't really that overpowered anymore. It would see play, but... It wouldn't be overpowered in any way. It would probably see play in some aggro decks, like Zoo. And that's about it. So, if that's sort of the parameters, then I do feel as if Shadow Sun Cleric... I'm not sure if they should unnerf it, but it's definitely something they could do. It wouldn't create any metagame problems, and it would just broaden the card pool slightly. Now, they have said in the past that they're not going to buff any cards because it's easier to nerf to balance than to buff, which I agree with. But when it comes to unnerfing things, it's a bit different because you know what you have to change to put it back to be remotely balanced. So that's why I'm doing this particular list. But yeah, number five, Shadow Sun Cleric. Number four, this might be controversial, Argent Commander. Now, Argent Commander used to have three health as well as Shadow Sun Cleric. Used to be a 4-3. Now, the reason this might be controversial is because for anyone who played in, what was it, September of last, not last year, 2013 at this point yeah september october around there the the october september season of 2013 was the argent commander wars as in turn six argent commander killed their guy and then until turn eight it was argent 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 they would just kill each other and then the shaman would always win these bounce because they have two fire elementals in their deck <laughs> It was really dumb, but it was basically, who has more Argent Commanders? You have board control. It was really stupid. However, there has been multiple cards that have come out to make 4 damage in a charge form significantly less powerful than it used to be. Notably, Sludge Belcher and Loatheb being two key cards that have 5 health. 
On top of that, there's just a lot more big, beefy guys right now. There's Sylvanas, which is very, very popular at the moment. And even some of the small stuff. Argent Commander isn't really fast enough to take out some of the small stuff. You'd rather just play some taunts. So, I think... Again, he's on the fringe of whether they should unnerve him because he'd be kind of ridiculous in Arena again, but uh, so would Silent Sun Cleric and things like that. But for constructed purposes, I could definitely see them bringing back the 4-3. Uh, the I don't think it would cause a return of the Argent Commander Wars, so to say. On to number 3. This is where things get interesting. Novice Engineer. Novice Engineer. Arguably one of the most overpowered two-drops they have ever made. Uh, as a 1-2. Funny thing about Novice was when it was a 1-2 and it was nerfed, everyone was shocked. And then we stood back and we were like, wait a second, every deck I play and play against has two of them. It was really funny because when you played Novice Engineer, it never felt broken because everyone played them. It just never felt broken. So no one complained about it, but then Blizzard were like, hey guys, 70% of you are playing this card. So they got rid of it. Now, I mean, if you go by Loatheb logic, that's not even, a, like, a breeze, but whatever. The difference is, the reason why I don't think Novice would be overpowered is because of two things. One, combo decks are dead, because you do not want free draw in combo decks. And two, two drops are really insane now. Uh, I mean, two drops used to be terrible, but now you have Mad Scientist, Haunted Creeper, Mech Warper. This thing has Battle Cry, so it doesn't buff Undertaker. So the aggro decks wouldn't play it just for free draw anymore. And giving some of the slower decks a bit more early game and a bit more sort of a, a bit more dig power through their uh, through their deck could be a little too good. But then you could just play Haunted Creeper for some early game. So it's a bit it's a bit interesting to see whether or not it would be good. That's why it's that's why it's a number three. It's not really on the should unnerf yet because it is a bit risky. Uh, Novice Engineer is not the kind of card which, if it's being used well, it's not very fair, but if it isn't abusable, it's one of the most fair cards you can possibly have in a game, so it's kind of weird. But yeah, Novice Engineer definitely could be made a 1-2 again. Now, the top two uh, vary from why did they nerf this to delayed nerf. Uh, number two is Illidan. Now, for anyone who doesn't know, which... I would not be surprised because this was a year and a half ago at this point. Illidan was nerfed from 6 life to 5. Was he overpowered? Uh, no. <laughs> That's the funny thing about Illidan. I actually played back then and he dominated for a couple of weeks. Like just straight on his own, straight up dominated. But Big Game Hunter. Big Game Hunter came back and just smacked him and he left. So... Illidan dropped off a lot. He became kind of like Ragnaros, going in and out of play uh, because of Big Game Hunter. And that's fine. Ragnaros has been doing that for ages. Almost two years at this point. So it's been going in and out of play continuously, and that's what Illidan did. The difference is they nerfed Illidan for some reason. I don't know why, quite frankly. When they nerfed him, he was not overpowered in any way. But even if he was perceived as overpowered, compared to what we have now, it's not a case of power creep. It's a case of having better options so you don't need to use a lot of the worst cards from base set to fill out your deck. Like Bold of Histoga was seeing play, for instance, and so was Yeti and the vanilla cards and things like that. But in the case of Illidan, he was a pretty heavy hitter, but nowhere near as heavy as some of the other stuff in the game at the time, even like Sylvanas at 5 mana. So, yeah, he was in that metagame. So, Savannah's a 5 mana, wasn't nerfed for a very long time, and Illidan, Illidan got the nerf hammer, but now we have Boom at 7, we have Sylvanas at 6, would you really play 7-6 over, uh, over Sylvanas? We have Mech Bear Cat, Mech Bear Cat came, did not break anything, and that is a very, very similar card. Not quite as powerful as Illidan, but it's also a mech and it's not legendary. So Mech Bear Cat didn't break any formats. So I don't think Illidan would either. And it'd be nice to kind of buff him up a bit. Just to make an underplayed card see a bit more play. Without having to come up with a buff for him. Since it has already happened. 
Now, the number one card is something which actually turned up on Reddit. One of the lucky draw guys, uh, wish to me, put it up on Reddit a while ago. And I actually got a lot of upvotes. Dalaran Mage. Now, interesting history with Dalaran Mage. It used to be a 2-4, and it seemed pretty overpowered. The thing is that when it was nerfed, I kind of assumed it was overpowered. But in hindsight, it wasn't. It was the fact that Rogue could run a million spells that just ran on spell power. And all they needed was a decent body on a spell power minion. That's literally all they needed. It just happened to be Dalaran Mage. So, I don't think Dalaran was actually overpowered back then. We have had a discussion about this. It's pretty... It was pretty fringe whether or not he was overpowered. I could definitely see why they nerfing because they kind of wanted to just kill the spell deck for Rogue because it was way overpowered but nowadays again going back to Shadowed Sun Cleric same kind of logic Spider Tank Tinkertown Technician like these are really powerful 3 drops and Dalaran Mage is kind of just sitting around not doing much not to mention we just got a 3 mana 3-3 three, three in Mage with spell power that is a mech and it saw zero play <laughs> So, I'm not even sure if the comparison is worth it, but uh, you could also make it a 2-4 just to make it better in Arena. I don't even know if it would see that much play if it made it a 2-4. I think it would see a very small amount of play uh, as a 2-4. And to be honest, that's fine. Buffing up really bad cards slightly just to make them fringe playable is quite healthy for a game. And I think Dollar Arm Mage could definitely be put back to where it used to be just to kind of spark up the card pool a little bit. That's kind of the main policy behind the five cards I did choose, is that none of them were too risky. Uh, the only ones that were a little risky are like Argent Commander and Novice Engineer, and even then I don't think they really are. Because all five cards on the list are sort of... They're very easy to work back into the metagame. And uh, the rankings from five to one were more kind of how reliable it would be to put them back. So I think Dollar on Mage is completely safe to put back as a 2-4. And it would probably help the game out a decent amount. Same with Ild and putting him to 6. Put an extra threat back in the meta. But anyway. Thank you all for watching. If you like the content, please subscribe. If you have any feedback, put it in the comment section below. And uh, before I sign off, I am going to try and explain this tournament format thing that I am organizing. Now... A friend of mine did actually make a short summary thing, which I'm going to put in uh, the description. But just to try and rattle it off, it's a best of seven for each team. So when two teams play against each other, best of seven. Then it's deck elimination, like everyone's used to. So you start with one class. When you lose, you switch classes, things like that. However, there's a twist. Both players have a captain. The captain can be on the team or it can be outside the team. And they conduct which of the four players goes and when, because each player controls one class. So, for instance, if one player goes in to start and they lose, they have to they get eliminated, and the captain chooses the best matchup based on players and also just classes to send in that player or place it. So basically, the whole format is that the entire team plays this best of seven. Now, I'm not sure how this is going to work out in terms of how it's how fun it's going to be to watch and things like that however if it does go well we are gonna we are gonna try and run a bit bigger do best of nine that was the original plan but if you're not sure about a format you want to cut it down to best of seven because it does it does mean that the it does mean the games don't drag on a ridiculous amount and it's much much easier to safely test things with four people involved instead of five but anyway as for now it's has been Jotto signing off